This mutation is called Overclocked and it is being played on Mal Warfare. We have three mutators active. We have Photon Overload, Avenger, and Speed Freaks. So overall not terrible as a mutator set. You can see here that Alarak is attempting to do a fast expand and uh, he will be overcharging this pylon in just a little bit. I'm not really sure why there are two pylons coming up here. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, if you want to, if you put a pylon over here, you can actually overcharge that and end up clearing the entire uh, entire expansion. For player one side, you can put a pylon on here on the high ground, and you end up clearing everything except the two supply depots. But uh, those supply depots do not need to be cleared if you want to be able to uh, if you want to take your expansion. So that tends to work as well. But Alrak will be overcharging these pylons, and he will be uh, starting to clear his expansion on this side. I do like this positioning though of the pylon. Uh, I normally put my pylon on here, uh, but I think this positioning is a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to find. But uh, yeah, there we go. This uh, this expansion will essentially be cleared for the most part. Uh, but that probe will have to be pulled over to uh, draw a little bit of vision, a little bit of vision on here because the speed freak mutator will uh, will allow these units to get a little bit of aggro. And yeah, okay. This expansion has been cleared now, and uh, yeah, Phoenix is slowly taking up as well and assuming he's building his Robo, and uh, he will be going for a Taldaran opener to begin with, which is uh, probably one of the better uh, one of the better Phoenix builds here uh, for this mission. It provides him with a good amount of uh, structured DPS, which will help him deal with the first set of suppression towers, and uh, yeah, more or less all quiet on the western front at the moment. Um, Avenger and Speed Freaks do, does kind of get a little bit annoying uh, when you uh, when you have attack waves that run at your base really really fast. And, you know, Avenger gives them extra speed as well, <laughs> but when you have Speed Freaks as well added to it, these things actually move really really fast. So uh, it can make attack waves a little bit more annoying to uh, to handle. But overall, I think the commands are doing okay. This attack wave has still not spawned, but uh, I have a feeling it'll be doing okay. So uh, we have uh, Alrax production being put onto the low ground over here, and the Alrax Nexus is now out, and uh, he'll be pretty much okay with once he gets his uh, his ascendants out. Once Alrax gets his uh, gets a large number of ascendants, he uh, he'll end up wiping pretty much all the attack waves. Uh, he's not really going to be struggling dealing with any of the units there. Uh, interesting choice of getting the Warbringer out first instead of the Taldaran. Uh, I normally go for the Daldaran opener. Um, it, it reduces the uh, requirements in terms of supply and minerals and the other resources uh, to get the unit out. And getting Taldaran actually helps a lot when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to dealing with the suppression towers. Uh, it doesn't really matter because eventually you go, you will have both of them out. But having the early game pressure that Taldaran can apply with Phoenix is a little bit better than having the Warbringer out first. But uh, that is just a personal preference. Phoenix gets into his Praetor armor and he's going to start pushing and uh, applying some pressure to this side as well. Remember the Photon Overload does make things a little bit more annoying to deal with, so uh, it's good to see these commanders are actually going to uh, deal with, uh, with the side. Just uh, clearing out ahead, just to make sure that they are you know, in uh, in control of the game as, they, uh, as they're sitting in their idle time here. So uh, always pushing in ahead, that's a good idea. And uh, there we go. So uh, we have the Purifier Armaments coming out now, and we have the Purification Blast, which is going to improve the Warbringer's ability to deal extra damage. Hey, so th there we go. We have the Taldoran out now. Let's kill Dallas as well, which is really good as well. He's going to provide a little bit of tankiness, tankiness for the front line. As you can see over here, he just, he's just there to soak up the damage. But uh, yeah, both commanders have this game pretty much under control so far. And uh, yeah, now we have... Uh, Phoenix starting to deck up as well, putting down an extra gateway, putting down a uh, Cybermax core, and uh, yeah, well, that's okay here. There's a secret missile that comes down onto Caldallus. Caldallus is not being microed back, unfortunately, and does end up, uh, will end up eating the secret missile along with Alarak as well. And Alarak uh, has to be a little bit careful because he actually doesn't have any supplicants next to him. And now we have another attack wave that is coming up here, getting a little bit of damage, a uh, no, little bit of damage to the transport, but uh, Phoenix does uh, recall himself back here into his the Solar Dragoon suit and uh, ends up cleaning up that attack wave. You see here that Alrak is building up, yeah, so he's getting his Ascendant upgrades now, just building up his production a little bit, getting a few more gateways, and we'll be able to uh, deal with that. No problems whatsoever. You can see here the speed of these Reapers right now. The Reapers are just absolutely insane. The first suppression tower has spawned, but Teldarn and Warbringer are there. Phoenix is paying attention, moves out of the way. Which we don't get 
hit the unnecessarily and taking unnecessary damage. Doing very nice, so might go back to Phoenix. Now that suppression tower will end up being cleaned up. So notice that the suppression tower does also have a cooldown overcharge. You don't really want to be fighting that for a very long time. But the advantage is that Caldalus is able to soak up all this damage. Phoenix is more valuable units alive. And uh, yeah, lots of macroing up now for Phoenix. For Phoenix, he's just getting all the upgrades that he can. Uh, and that is basically the more optimal play here for Phoenix. Not sure where that probe is going. He's putting down a pylon somewhere, but I'm not sure why. But I think it's just maybe a forward warp and pylon here. And Phoenix doesn't really need it because once he gets his, uh, his conservators out, he can just warp and things directly to it. But uh, it might be there just for an emergency overcharge. And now we have the first warp and the descendants for Alarax. So his first four ascents are out. So we need to get some more supplicants so you can feed these ascendants. And uh, yeah, after the second security terminal, I think Alarax will be fine. He'll be able to handle the attack waves while Phoenix deals with suppression towers. Alarax ascendant build is obviously not very good for dealing with the suppression towers, but uh, Phoenix is you know really decent as well. They tend to complement each other really well. Uh, Alarax can basically delete his attack, uh, delete the attack waves with uh, with his ascendant balls, so it should not really be uh, too. Uh, too difficult for him. So Alarak is going to go ahead and uh, try and go for the bonus objective here. Phoenix is going to have to push by himself, which is a little bit unfortunate, but Alarak is not going to be able to provide too much uh, backup for Phoenix, so maybe just uh, with the help of Death Fleet might be a little bit valuable for him. But uh, yeah, Phoenix will have to be a little bit careful. Another Kalatalus gets warped in, and uh, now there's a Conservator field as well, keeping uh, Phoenix's units alive. On this side, there is an attack wave that comes up that does end up catching out Alarak. The attack wave does focus down one of these Ascendants, and uh, one of these Ascendants does end up getting cleaned up. And now this Avenger stack is going to be very, very problematic. There is another, uh, de there's definitely that comes up uh, as an emergency, uh, as an emergency reaction to these very, very large Avenger stack liberators, which uh, is a good idea. And this is one of the reasons why I do not like to go for the... Uh, I don't like to bring my Sentence out until in the middle stages of the game, when they have a few more uh, few more power overwhelming stacks. Because uh, the attack waves will focus them down, especially with the Speed Freaks Avenger. Uh, it's very difficult to keep stuff off your Sentence. We have another attack wave now that has spawned, and it's attacking Orion's transport. But uh, Alrak now is uh, already in position to be able to handle this with no problem whatsoever. He could have actually teleported his uh, his uh, his army back with his uh, with his mothership, but he didn't seem to do that. Alrak is getting focused far down by some of these units here. Alrak has to be very careful. He doesn't really want to eat those ascendants. Now these units have aggroed his ascendants here. And another ascendant, I believe, has gone down a total of three ascendants so far, uh, keeping Alrak's uh, unit count very very low and uh, no problems for him. Phoenix has taken out the suppression tower, but now there's another attack wave here that is uh, getting a few more problems, and now the next suppression tower has spawned. Phoenix is already in position and good to go. Alarak has to keep his descendants back because those things are going to get uh, focused down very, very quickly. Also, the thing I have noticed is that Alarak is actually kind of short on the uh, on his on his Vespin count because he's gone for the. These things, all these bases seem to be okay here. I think he's just struggling because he is uh, his ascendants are getting focused down by the by the attack wave, which is uh, somewhat problematic. It takes a while for Alarak. Yeah, see, you can see over here these reapers are just, like they're just after these ascendants, and uh, yeah, this is uh, this is usually why you don't really want to have the ascendants fighting in the front line uh, in the early stages of the game. I tend to get them up to about three or four stacks before I go ahead and push through. Because, yeah, you can see they, they really, really like these ascendants. Uh, they have very, very high aggro priority here. But uh, there we go. This is the second security terminal done, and now Phoenix is going to be uh, pushing to this side. A very nice split on uh, on Phoenix's scout over there, and there's another one there. Unfortunately, no no split there. Uh, the Raven does get its target. At least one out of two. Now I can just start pushing through here. You see now the ascendant count is starting to rise and the ascendant and power overwhelming stats are starting to go up. So now uh, Alar can start pushing a little bit into the bases here. As long as he doesn't, uh, he's not too ambitious. So there's another secret missile on here on the one with Supplicant. Supplicant does not get split off, does get picked off by that secret missile. Now Alarak has used Empower Me here to start uh, dealing more and more damage to these units. Remember, Par Avenger does make the uh, the units significantly more tankier. Gives them more armor, gives them more HP, gives them more attack speed. It's just all all around nasty. Cyber is left over. 
in the mind blast comes up to clean up that hybrid. There's a siege tank that has been shelling away onto Alwax's army here. Has a total of one kill so far. The overall, uh, not too much damage taken on Alwax's side. There is a bunch. There are a bunch of ghosts here that have picked up a lot of power overwhelming stacks, which is a bit of a problem. Phoenix does not have any detection. Unfortunately, Alwax is now there. He comes up, He's cleaning up that side. The overall losses on this are fairly minimal. There is a death fleet that comes down now to help start pushing to the side. Uh, there it'll be there will be an attack wave that'll be spawning here once this transport gets to a certain position. So I'll try and have a look and see how the attack wave is gonna get dealt with on the command part. I think Phoenix will probably just use a solar dragoon to jump in and he'll use a solar flare to just wipe out the side. So there's no recharge here. Warping on two supplicants. Two supplicants are not gonna be able to go along this side. And uh, there is also an ascendant here, but these pylons do get picked up, so the ascendant warp has been cancelled. And now you have a very bunch of angry units here. So Phoenix has decided to recall his entire army to go and deal with this side, uh, which is okay, I guess. Alrak will be pushing into here now. He has a few more ascendants now, and uh, they are a little bit stronger as well, so they'll be able to deal with this side without too many problems. There's a few psionic orbs to come down, and uh, some uh, plasma blasts to do get. Uh, uh, but now there's a there is attack with that spawns from the back of Alarak's army ends up flanking the descendants and Alarak unfortunately has lost a lot of descendants over there that was catastrophic Alarak only has one descendant left but Phoenix now is in position to help uh, Alarak out in, uh, uh, in this uh, engage as he ends up picking up these, uh, these liberators and then start focusing down these, uh, these uh, suppression towers so that's the first suppression tower out the next suppression tower that will be spawning is on this side. But yeah, you can see how quickly this can be, like this can be very catastrophic if you're not paying attention. And uh, unfortunately because of Speed Freaks and Avenger, it's very difficult to get your sentence out of the way and run. Because uh, you can see here, these, uh, these enemy attack waves are just directly on top of you so fast. And there we go, that is the last of Alarak's Ascendants gone, which uh, means Alarak's army has been essentially reset in terms of its power level. The next uh, Suppression Tower has spawned, Phoenix does end up uh, dealing with this attack wave, but now this uh, Suppression Tower will also have a harass wave with it, so again, Alarak will have to be a little bit careful in how he chooses to take this engage. He does have enough supplicants now, so they will be able to keep Alarak alive, Alarak is not going to be getting picked off anytime soon. Uh, but now the suppression tower is dealing a little bit of damage. And now there is another attack wave that will be harassing the side and Orion's transport. That pylon sends no chance against here. And Phoenix warps in, uses a solar flare, essentially one shot, and clears up this attack wave with no problems whatsoever. Alarak has cleaned up the suppression tower, and there is one last uh, unit over here that gets cleaned up. Now this next suppression tower has spawned, but uh, yeah, there is nothing over here. There won't be any uh, harass waves, but there is one harass wave that has spawned on this other side here that will be intercepting with Alarak army. Alright, we'll have to go ahead and do it. Again, the Reapers against Shadow Tech, not a very pleasant composition. Uh, Phoenix has cleaned up the Suppression Tower, he decides to go and help, and now there's an Empower Me here on Alarak. Alarak ends up wiping that side out. So Alarak has gone for the Death Fleet cooldown and the Overcharge Mastery. Uh, and he's gone for the Death Fleet cooldown instead of the Empower Me duration, so I'm assuming this is because he wants to use Death Fleet to start to just being able to soak up a little bit more damage from the Avenger stacks. Uh, rather than that. Phoenix has uh, gone for the Phoenix attack speed, AI vitality, pretty much standard build here. Uh, I normally go for a little bit less points with the starting supply. I'll always go for maybe like, four or five points, but uh, that's pretty much okay. So uh, we have a bunch of secret missiles that go down onto this attack wave, but now Alarak is being able to push with Phoenix's army. And we'll see how useful the conservator protection fields are as well. Just having these uh, conservator fields uh, reduce the amount of damage that your army ends up taking. Uh, it's very very useful for uh, when you're making big pushes like this. It keeps the, the, yeah, the damage reduction is like 35%, which is uh, it, it's not a small number. And uh, very useful when you have fragile armies like this and expensive armies like Immortals and Carriers and, uh, and Colossi. So you can see here there's a hybrid dominator that is trying to go ahead and take out some of these units, but it does uh, aggro some of the interceptors by uh, Phoenix's Carriers and uh, the hybrid dominator gets cleaned up. This side has, uh, is pretty much okay now. Uh, there is another bonus objective. I'm not really sure if Alarak wants to go ahead and deal with it. He's decided to go for a full supplicant build combined with his Empower Me. He does have a few more Ascents out in the mix now, but again, uh, a little bit too few Ascents for, uh, for this, and it'll be a while for him to be able to ramp up those Ascents to a point where they're actually really, really strong. Phoenix just puts down the Conservator field here and is going to start pushing into the side. So the amount of cannon goes down on one of these units, but it gets stun locked by Mojo, and now he's 
Because you can't really do anything else. And uh, the side is pretty much has nothing else to that can be left standing. And now it's just a question of do the commanders get lucky enough so that the suppression tower spawns on this side. Fortunately, there is a harasser that has spawned here, and Phoenix is going to recall his entire army to be able to get into position and uh, clean up this uh, this harasser. There is a suppression tower that has spawned on this side, uh, and uh, again, there's another warpen of ascents here and the cyclone trying to kite them. Because, you know, this is what cyclones do, they're made to annoy players, and uh, now there is a suppression tower that has to be dealt with on this side. There is a Warbringer that gets sent, unfortunately the Warbringer might get focused down by a large number of Liberators, then ends up going down to those Liberators, but now Phoenix's army is in position, and uh, yeah, there are a few cyclones here as well, but they are going to stand no match against Alex's army, and now just Mind Blast to clean up whatever's left of the Avenger stacked units over here. And uh, Alex is going to try and push in a little bit, decides to change his mind because he yeah, had a lot of overcharges here. You do not really want to get flipped down here. A few more overcharges come down from Alarak and a Warpen to uh, help uh, deal with the Suppression Tower. But there was a, uh, a Harass Wave that spawned the Suppression Tower, but these uh, pretty much gets cleaned up now by Alarak. And now Mojo and Mojo and Co. are here to go on that side. Alarak now is starting to, uh, he has his Empower Me, so he's able to clean up this uh, the rest of this enemy base here. And there's another Harass Wave that is uh, starting to attack Orion's Transport. And now we have a double Suppression Tower spawn here. Phoenix is already in position. He'll end up deleting that Suppression Tower without too many problems. And what is left of this attack wave gets uh, cleaned up here. And remember, the stun on Mojo is very, very valuable for keeping the uh, keeping these Liberators in check, making sure they don't end up uh, taking out your army when, uh, when they siege up. Alrak is now also getting into position here. There is again another harass wave. We have a few psionic orbs that go down that end up cleaning out a large number of these reapers. Less of the Avenger stacks get transferred over to these uh, cyclones. And pretty much the side is cleaned up. There is uh, a few more units here that end up getting uh, left behind. But uh, again, there's a recall here. I'm just making sure that the next attack wave that will be coming up is uh, being able to be uh, handled. I don't think the bonus objective is going to be done, I think. Yeah, there we go. So the bonus objective was uh, was worth it here, uh, which is a good idea given that the, the amount of pressure this applies. Now take a look at the Ascendants. The Ascendants have grown up and just instantly one-shot that attack wave. And this is the power of Alarak's Ascendants over here. And uh, yeah, there are GG's on both parts because this is... Uh, that was the last attack wave of the mission. And, uh, for the most part, Orans Transport has a, few, uh, has a few scratches on the hull, but uh, has been saved and all the security terminals have been purified. That is GG.